Hi, in this video, I want to talk to you about the security panel. Let's go ahead and scroll down and grab this guy right here in the title bar where you get the four arrows. Left click, hold and drag that guy up to the top of the page here. So I don't have to keep scrolling down. Let's do that with this other web hosting account as well. And by the way, if you didn't know, now you do. You can, in fact, customize the look of your homepage on your cPanel account. Now that here we've got these various applications within our security panel. The first one over here is password protect directories. Comes in pretty handy if you've got sensitive material, kind of like maybe zip files that you are marketing. And you don't want just anybody to be able to have access to those unless, of course, they've paid you for that access. Well, here you can put all those zip files or other items you want to keep protected. You can put them in a directory or folder and make sure that that is password protected. And then you just simply email that username and password to the people you want to have access. IP Deny Manager. I myself like to avoid this, but it is there in case you want to use it. What this does, if we click on this link here, this allows you to deny access to your website files by people associated with a particular IP address. Now, let me just try to explain a little bit about an IP address. Where a home address would tell you where a particular person lives, an IP address is more like the zip code where a lot of people live. So if you were to use an IP address to block access for a specific person, well, you may block access for that specific person, but also everybody else that uses that particular IP address or range. And for that matter, they can probably get around it if they know what they're doing by using a proxy IP address. That's way beyond the scope of this video. Basically, I'm, what I'm saying is that for somebody that knows what they're doing, an IP deny manager really is not gonna do much good. So where this might come into play is if maybe your customers or the visitors to your site are predominantly US or Canadian or European, you can put in an IP range for countries that you do not want to have access to your site because they could not be your customers for one reason or another, then you might assign an IP range like what is shown here to assist in blocking anybody from that country or that region from having access to your files. So really that would be the only benefit I could see behind using an IP deny feature but it is here just in case you wanted to. Let's head on back to home. Now you've got the SSL and the TLS manager. This allows you to generate and manage SSL certificates, keys, and signing requests. Now all of these are part of making your website more secure, kind of like this guy right up here. To be able to have your URL do this, where you got this little padlock thingy on the HTTPS, you need to have what's called an SSL certificate. And frankly for me, it's pretty time consuming to not only learn this, but it's even time consuming once you've learned it to do it. I myself would rather spend a couple of bucks to, and it might even be somewhere between 20 to 50 bucks, to have your web hosting service do this for you. And some might not even charge you anything to do this for you if you purchase your certificate from them. So if you click on this, just real quick like, you can see where you can generate your private key, your certificate signing request, and your certificates themselves. But again, this is something that I would be more apt to leave to the web hosting companies. They would take a day or two to do it, but that day or two, you can spend doing something else that might generate you money instead of spending money. But at least now you know where that information lies in case it's something you want to check into, or if somebody has a question about your SSL certificate, you might be able to find an answer there. Now, SSH or Shell Access, the SSH stands for Secure Shell, which is basically a network protocol, kind of like FTP, only this guy here is a lot more secure than your typical FTP transfers. So with an SSH access, instead of using a username and a password that you do with an FTP setup, with these guys here, you're using a public key and a private key. Now with the correct keys, networked devices can then exchange or transfer data back and forth. And we take a look at this real quick. You see here you've got a little video tutorial to kind of guide you through this stuff. And right here is where you can go in to manage your private and public keys. Come on back home here. Hotlink protection comes in pretty handy if you have, say, images, for example, on your website that you don't want people to 
steal or maybe if they do steal them no big deal but you at least ways don't want them to be sucking up your bandwidth so if they're going to steal them they should at least steal them and put them on their own server instead of using your bandwidth in the process let's take a look at this real quick because sometimes there's not much you can do about people taking your stuff but for them to take your stuff and to steal your bandwidth in the process that's like a double slap in the face so here's how you can protect your bandwidth. You may not be able to protect your stuff, but you can at least protect your bandwidth by enacting or enabling the hotlink protection. You put in the URLs here to allow access, and here you can create a page, an HTML page, for example, that says something to the effect of, this person is, does not have authorization to provide you with the image that should show here. If you want to see that particular image, go to the authorized URL and then just put that URL on there. Again, whatever you want to put in here, if you want to put anything in here at all, you may just block it. So then they would just get an error on their website where they're trying to post that image and take your bandwidth in the process. And here you can put the different types of extensions, whether they're just images or even PDFs or zip files or whatever. Most of the time though, this is just going to be to protect images. And that's why by default, you've got the most popular image extensions here. And if you want to check this box here, you can. That allows direct request. Basically, if they enter the actual URL of the image in a, into a browser, then the image would show. Myself, for true protection, I would just put in the URLs to my websites that have these images posted on them and just leave it at that. Make sure that I've got enable checked. And then if I do make any changes here, click on submit and also make sure I've clicked enable and then that hotlink protection is activated. So that's hotlink protection. And under leech protection, this is pretty cool, especially if I've got like some outsourcers, people that I trust to do some work on a particular directory or folder. And I give them username and password access to that folder. And then they turn around and give that information to some of their friends. Well, with Leech Protect, I can put a stop to that. Let's go ahead and click on this guy right here. Let's assume that's the directory that I've given access to. Well, I can put in here a number of login attempts that once exceeded, something's going to happen. So if we put in, say, four, which is recommended, you can put in whatever number you want. But if we put in, say, five, and the sixth person tries to log in within a specific amount of time, in this case, a two-hour period, then that sixth person and anybody thereafter will get something other than access based on this information that I put down here. They might get redirected to another URL that I've got set up. The account might be deleted altogether if I check this box here. And I would definitely want to check this box and put in the email address to me so that I would be alerted each time that this took place. And I also have this option down here where I can disable compromised accounts, where basically if this were to take place, then I would get an email alert. They would also, the people after this login attempt would also be sent to a particular URL that I'd sit in here, but that account would also be disabled altogether. And then just make sure you click on enable to make that active. And of course, then you can come back in here and disable it if you wanted to. And let's head on back home here. And GNU PG keys. These are used as a way to encrypt and decipher or decrypt emails or messages through the use of the public and private keys. You know, kind of like everyone would have the public key to my emails and can see the messages or emails, but could not read or know what all that garbly goog was without the private key. If you take a quick look at this, you can create a new key, just put in your name, email, nickname, whatever you wanted to put in there, and the key password, put it in again. I would just use the password generator here. And the expiry date, if you wanted to go with one year, three weeks, or just whatever you wanted. The key size, 1024, or you really want to get hairy, you can go all the way up to 4096. That's pretty difficult to guess. And then you can click on generate key. Or if you've got keys created elsewhere, you can use the import option here. But this is pretty heavy duty. So if you're not really into the spy craft and you're not really concerned with people having that kind of access to your emails, because I mean, it's fairly secure for the most part. But if you are really super concerned about the possibility of somebody reading your emails, then you've got this option here. And don't forget some of these items where I just kind of skimmed over, you've got the video tutorials here, which might go into greater detail 
than what I covered on these individual items. For example, under the IP Deny Manager, just check out the video tutorial here, which might go over more in depth than what I did. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on the security panel. Thanks for watching and you have a great day.